<clears throat> I say again, it's good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning. If you would, you can be turning your Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians. We want to look up, uh, in chapter 1 of, book of 1 Corinthians and read the little reading there. And as Paul had heard uh, from a, a source that there was some problems going on, divisions and stuff down in the church there at Corinth, and he... Uh, he made his way there, or wrote them a letter, and uh, tried to explain to them some things that they were uh, divided about. And uh, so uh, he had been there, I know, and because uh, they had uh, recognized him as one of theirs that did some baptizing. But in verse uh, chapter one and verse ten, Paul starts out or, or in his letter to them. He says, Now I beseech you, brethren, or I beg you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Now this is what Paul was advising the church there to do, and uh, Today, the, this advice is still good for our church and for all the churches that uh, are serving the Lord. And, of course, they were, uh, he had heard from this, uh, uh, I believe it was a, a, a coal, I believe it was just the family of the, but anyway, we'll get to it. But anyway, he had heard some things about them, and so he's given them this, this advice. Yeah, in, in verse 11, For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house, the house of coal, that there are contentions among you. Now, these contentions uh, can develop into some things that will bust a church wide open, Amen. because uh, what has happened is that the devil gets into the church, and he gets a, gets a few thinking about one thing and a few thinking about another, and he gets a division there. And a house divided, of course, the Bible against itself cannot stand. Amen. And so we, we need to remember this. Uh, if we are ever encountered with a, a, a something like this, that, uh, that there's, there's, no, there's no reasoning to, for division. And if there is a division, if there is something that's uh, uh, being talked about, whispered about through the congregation, the whole congregation needs to come to come together in it and present it to the pastor and discuss the thing. And as Paul uh, tried to tell these people, and he, he solved their problem. Amen. And the problem can be solved <coughs> because the devil is the one that stumps these things and brings them about. And, and uh, so here we see that uh, Paul, he, uh, in verse, uh, in chapter 2, in verse 1, notice what he says here. He's telling the church, he says, and I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Amen. And this morning, that's salvation. Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. The one that came to this world and died for our sins, shed his blood on the cross of Calvary, took the blood, applied it to the mercy seat in the presence of God. And when the sins are there, the blood covers it and God cannot see that sin. So we see this morning, this is what he came to this church to talk to them about. But back in our lesson now, <clears throat> in this in verse 12, he says, Now this I say to every one of you, now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and I am of Apollos. And this Apollos, if you look back uh, in 1 Corinthians 3 and 4, you'll see a little bit more about him. It, it explains he was a good man, and he was, uh, but he didn't understand all of this, and so they had to, some of the brethren had to carry him around and uh, explain to him uh, uh, about baptism and stuff of this nature. But anyway, he says here, uh, in the latter part of verse 12, he says, And I of Cephas, and I of Christ. So these people were, were some of them were saying, Hey, I'm of a Paul, 
Uh, and, and I believe what Paul says. Others will say, I'm of Apollos. Uh, and, and what had happened was there had been a division. And so they had, they had come to themselves and saying, hey, one's teaching one thing and one teaching another. But listen to what Paul says. Paul says in verse 13, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you but Crispius and Gaius. Now, listen what Paul says. He says, I thank God that I didn't baptize you. Now, first of all, we know that we have churches that teach and preach. Without baptism, salvation is not complete. Mm -hmm. And we know this morning, we know here at this church that that's not right. That baptism does not have anything to do with your salvation right. because it is identifying you that you have been saved, but it doesn't help you help your, to get saved. And Paul says here, he says, I thank God that I baptized none. So this morning, if Paul came to these brethren at this church and preaching to them and saying, hey, I hear you got a division among you. I hear that there's problem going on. I hear this and I hear that. But then he comes along and says, I'm glad I didn't baptize none of you. Well, listen, he's saying to them this morning, listen, these divisions that are coming along and baptism was one of them that it had caught a split in the church, in the, in the fellow, fellowship there at the church. And he's saying to them, hey, you don't need to depend upon baptism for salvation. And that's exactly what he's saying. Of course, when he says this, I thank God that I baptized none of you. Right. And so if, 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 if God, if he says here in verse 2 of chapter 2, for I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. He ain't saying nothing about because he's, uh, he has mentioned time and time, I came not to baptize, but I came to tell you about Jesus Christ and, and the blood that he shed on the cross of Calvary and his life that he gave for you. And so Paul here is saying, then this, I thank God that I baptized none of you, but these two people, lest any should say that I had baptized in my own name. And of course, we know this morning, baptism is, is given in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And, and here he's saying, um, that they might they might want to give him credit for their salvation is what he's trying to say to them and so he says here in verse 15 lest any should say i had baptized in my own name now listen in verse 16 and i baptized also the household of stephan because besides i know not whether i baptize any other for christ sent me not <clears throat> to baptize amen he sent paul and you can read it over in in the book of Acts, and, and uh, 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 I believe it's around the ninth chapter, and he he sent them to he sent Paul to the Gentiles strictly to tell them of Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ, the only one that can that the only way to be saved is through Jesus Christ. And so he says here, for Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. And so he's saying here, I am, bab I am preaching Christ and him crucified. I'm not preaching to you baptism, but I'm preaching to you Christ and him baptized, lest the cross of Christ, the cross that, that emblem, the symbol of, uh, 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 that, I mean, the cross that Christ had on should be made of none effect. And so he's saying, if I preach baptism to you for salvation, then I can't turn around and say Christ is the way of salvation unless uh, I make a, 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 a mess out of everything and tell you two different things. And so here is what he says, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Right. Now, that's, that's the flesh for you. Listen, people, this flesh that we have, it counts the preaching of the cross foolishness. The flesh this morning does not want to serve God. Mm -hmm. you, can, you, can, you can take that, put it in your pipe, and smoke it because, listen, this, this flesh that we have, 
It's sinful. It's not saved. And the only way that it can get forgiveness of what it done is to die. And right. so this morning, our soul is saved and our body is not. And there is the warfare that Paul here was talking about. And he says here, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. And listen, this morning there's so many people that will listen to someone try to teach the Bible and, and preach God's word. And they'll shake their head and say, I don't believe that old foolish mess. I believe that I've got to get out here and do this and do that. And I need to, uh, to stay in line with God. And I need this and I need to do this. And listen, what the Bible says that you need to do for salvation is have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and the blood that he shed on the cross of Calvary for the remission of sin. Amen. And this is the only and the only way that a soul can be saved. And that don't mean that the body is saved because the body is not saved until after it's dead. And it, it, it pays a sin debt. So this morning I hope this will this will help you if you've never seen if you've never seen this before about baptism and about works for salvation because in Ephesians 2 89 the, the, the Bible says it's not of works for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of works it is a gift a gift of God Amen. not of works lest any man should boast and so the salvation is a gift from Jesus Christ and it's not anything that you can go out here and work and do and obtain because it just don't work that way because uh, that's the flesh's way of, of trying to satisfy the soul, but the, it's not right. So here we see this. Notice here in, in, in the verse 19 what he says. He says, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise Amen. and will bring to nothing the understanding of prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? And God does make foolishness of all the world out here and what it has to offer. And the world is offering that to us this day. And the devil is the instigator of it because the, the world is the devil's and he has it to offer to you and he shakes it in front of you every day and says, Hey, don't you want this and don't you want that? Well, listen, that's what's going on in this world today. And that's the reason why that so many people doubt what the Bible says about it. Because they say, hey, I can do it on my own and I can get the job done. And I can feel right to, when I stand before God because I did this and I did this. And it's, the Bible says, it's not a works. Let's be right. And I can't, I won't be able to stand before God and say, I stood down there and I taught a Sunday school class and I went over yonder and I helped Aunt Mary uh, uh, mow her yard and I went down yonder and I helped this poor guy do this and do that. That's not what God wants us to do Amen. for salvation. God don't want us to do anything because he said, I sent my son, Jesus Christ, to Amen. this world. And it's a free, it's free, it's free. It, you know, it was, it was back in Moses' time under the law and they had to work and they had to do this and they had to offer sacrifices and they had to do this but now he says hey paul you go tell those people over there the gen they the jews have rejected this the jews have rejected the, the, the jesus christ and you go tell them about my son jesus christ and what he did for this world and how that he died on the cross and it's, and they will accept it and so this is what why Paul is here at this church and why he is telling them about this thing of <coughs> baptism and why he is telling them of works for salvation because it's it's not of it's not of God for us to do these works. Now now notice here for the Jew in verse 22 <clears throat> for the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom but Paul says, we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block. Now, why was it a stumbling block to the Jews? 
because the Jews was looking for their king, the Messiah, to come in all of his glory and all of this. And Jesus Christ came as a lowly child in the manger, and he, he, was, he was the son of God. And they would not accept Jesus Christ as their Savior because he came like a, a pauper instead right. of as the king. And so here he says, we preach Christ crucified on the cross and shedding his blood and dying for the sins of the world unto the Jews. It's a stumbling block. And to the Greeks, foolishness. But unto them which are called both Jew and Greek, Amen. Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. So that puts us uh, uh, under God's authority but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And what is the one of the foolish things? It's a gift. It's a gift. Uh, salvation, you don't have to work for it. Salvation, Amen. you don't have to do nothing for it except accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and believe in the works that He did for you while He was here on this world, on, in this earth. And accept that. But He says here, he, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And so, the thing of it is, you tell people, hey, salvation is something that God and Jesus Christ has offered to you for nothing. It's free. All you have to do is accept it. Mm -hmm. Hey, they laugh at you. They say, no, I've got to get out here and do so many works, and I've got to, I've got to go to church, and I've got to go to do this, and I've got to do this, and I've got to do this to stay safe. Listen. It's foolishness. And that's what that's what Paul is telling these people here this morning. He says uh, here in verse 27 uh, or 28, the, And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are, mm -hmm. that no flesh should glory in his presence. Amen. In that way this morning, people, I cannot stand before God in my uh, shape like I am here in this old flesh and all this and, and I'll not be able to stand before him in glory then because listen all I can do is say thank you Lord uh, for saving my soul right. and those that stand before him in the other resurrection in the white throne judgment listen they're going to say Lord didn't we do all of these things didn't we go over there and do this and do over and do that and and he's going to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And because of their works and because of their proudness in the flesh. So here, here it is. But of him, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. That according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. So Amen. this morning, anything that you have, anything that you've got, anything that you want, ever want to have, you give God glory for it. Mm -hmm. And that's that. the main thing is your salvation. Right. Because without the shed blood of Jesus Christ, you would be eternally damned. Right. And you would be there eternally and people listen according to what god's word says or it's it's a it's a it's a it's a blazing it's a flame uh, a, a, a pit uh, a lake a fire and there's no there's no getting away from it and so you need to glorify god so here in 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 this chapter and then we see the second thing here he says and I've already read it to you, but he says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear 
and in much trembling. This is the condition that Paul was in because, listen, he didn't know what was fixing to happen to him at any time because if you'll look back and read uh, some of Paul's experiences, he was he was stoned, he was drug out of the city to be uh, dead, and uh, he, was, he was exposed to all of these things. And listen, he came there with this trembling and, and, and he was afraid, but he, he, he stood his ground and he told them that uh, he overcome this fear and trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of a man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Amen. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And Amen. Well, that's, that's the key to it right there. He says that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man. If you depend upon what man says, if you depend upon, you know, even as I'm reading this, I'm thinking there is, there is people that will tell you that they can pray you out of hell. Hmm. There's people that's, that, and they're called priests, and they go to the Catholic Church. Right. And uh, you have to do this, and you have to do that, and you have to have so many Hail Marys and all this. And listen, that that is your last, the, the last chance is after you die. They say, well, if you'll uh, if you'll uh, pay so much, if your family will pay so much, uh, we'll the priest can pay pray for you and pray you out of hell. And I've heard this, and, and I don't know if it's, I don't know, because I don't belong to Catholic Church, I don't care anything about it. But, uh, you know, they, they, they linger on with this thing, and they say, well, we pray part of him out, but we still like, and they have asked for a woman. But, I mean, and, and I don't want to get into that. But the thing of it is, here, that's faith in mankind. Mm -hmm. And listen, the, the faith of man is, is not worth listening to. Because he says here, how, in verse 6, how be it we speak wisdom among them that are that are perfect, yet not the, among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden mystery, our wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Amen. Which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. And so they wasn't aware of what uh, uh, Jesus was telling them. They wouldn't accept it. And all they said was, we, we want somebody else. We want a... a, a this man, Jesus, that says he's the son of God to be crucified, to be killed because he is, he is a, a slanderer of the word. He is misleading and all these things. And he says, uh, here, but as it is written, I have not seen no ear, neither have nor, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. And so Amen. this morning, people, uh, here's something that should be very encouraging to you because if you're if you're saved and you're trying to uh, serve the God as best you can, listen, he's prepared things for you. And it says here that the things which God has prepared for them that love him. And, and, and we haven't never heard about it. We've never seen it because it's so special. But God has revealed them unto us by spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man, which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. And Amen. this morning, we that are saved have the spirit of God within us, and we can identify the Spirit of God, and we know that He's there, and so He says here, but the Spirit which is, uh, now we we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given unto us, and the, the word, notice here, friendly, are given, is grace, is 
salvation. Amen. It's free, and that's that is the 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 climax of anything is when you get something free. It's a gift. You don't have to do anything for it. It's a gift. And listen, all in this world that the Lord Jesus wanted you to do, wants you to do is believe that what he did while he was up on this earth, walking and, 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 and doing the things that he sinned not, and believe on him, and that he went to the cross of Calvary, and he died, and that Roman soldier pierced his side, and that blood came forth out of his side, and that blood is what covers sin. Amen. You have to, you have to, you need to accept that as your uh, uh, one of your uh, things of salvation, because that's what happened. And it's 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 all it's nothing of works. Amen. Uh, uh, if we had been there uh, and could have done something, listen, it's still it's man's works. But we this morning uh, accept the blood of Jesus Christ as our. Uh, our covering for sin. Uh, we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior because the Bible says He died for the sins of the world. And so, your sins come from Adam and Eve. My sins came from Adam and Eve. And listen, Jesus Christ died to cover all those sins. And that's the only way this morning that we can be <clears throat> standing in front of God and hear, Well done, thou good and faithful servant, this morning. So we thank you this morning for listening to the reading that we had here. Uh, I know that uh, it was quite a bit of reading, but the thing of it is, there's maybe some things this morning that you have heard that won't, won't uh, uh, stir you that much. But listen, we're, we're recording. We're going out into the world, and somebody somewhere may hear something that it may turn the light on and, and, and his word will not return to us void. Amen. So thank the Lord for these things that we have that we can spread the word of God. So this morning I thank you for listening to us and I hope uh, it's been a blessing to you. Thank you.